All right, guys. This is my first official surf launch with the big boy, Old Town Sportsman Autopilot. Waves are a little bigger than I was hoping for, but uh, we'll just time the sets, hopefully, and kind of avoid a big wave. We'll see how it goes. Launching, you gotta be either all in or all out. You gotta pedal to the pedal, get through those waves, get over them, or you gotta fail completely. There's no halfway. If you go halfway, yes, you're for a dive. That was actually not too bad. When you're you know, getting ready to launch, it doesn't hurt to kind of take a, a minute to watch the waves. See how the sets are rolling in. And we're in. First surf launch on the uh, old town was successful. I mean, I said it was a little rougher than I hoped, but it's still pretty calm out here. I wouldn't take this in the big, big surf. That'll be reserved for my uh, my Hobie. But anyways, we're we're out in the fishing grounds now. We're gonna start drifting. We're trying to catch some halibut today. So I'm gonna be drifting in, in the open ocean, which is where we are today. You can use as many rods as you want for halibut. Um, I tend to use either two or three. More than that is just too much to handle. If you hook up on one, it's gonna get tangled up in all the other rods. Um, so I'm just gonna use two today. Two is a good, easy to manage number. Um, and what I have, give me a moment. This is the bait right here. It's a frozen squid, nothing fancy. I'd love to catch my own, but right now I don't think you can get your own. It's not from a kayak at least. So anyways, frozen squid on a little trap rig. That's it. This is, it's gonna be the same thing on both rods. Usually I like to try a couple of different things, but for now, we'll just go with the squid. We know how a bit loves squid, so can't go wrong there. So the main problem but the main trick when you're drifting for halibut like this, especially with squid, is everything likes squid. So like lingcod, rockfish, all that stuff. That'll all eat squid too. So I'm trying to get away from the reefs. I want to get to a sandy area just to avoid all of that stuff. Um, but I mean, probably throughout the day, we'll probably catch a few lingcod or rockfish as bycatch. We will have to release them because I'm using two rods. Um, but maybe towards the end of the day, if we can't find any halibut, maybe I'll uh, change it up a little bit and start targeting those rockfish and lingcod. Um, to do that, I have to drop down to one rod, which is no problem. But for now, we're gonna go all in on halibut, see if I can find one. It's still pretty early in the season. Um, they would catch some in the bay, but open ocean is usually a little bit tougher. So. We'll see what happens this morning. This is kind of like a scouting mission. Well, at least for me, when I when I go and find my own fish, it's a little more rewarding um, rather than just following reports. All right, got the new camera angle set up. We got both rods in. We are set to go. Now we just gotta find a halibut. Oh, man. All right, well, give you a little update. It's 9.15. We're still waiting for that first bite. Been drifting around. I drifted from like 45 feet of water out to like close to 60. Um, we're back in a little bit more, 52 feet. I haven't seen any signs of really anything. I got a couple of nibbles that from small fish, probably a little rockfish or something, nibbling off the end of the squid. But no real action. Which is suspected. I mean, it's still pretty early in the season, so it's going to be a grind out here. We're going to find, we're basically looking for one bite. Maybe around like 11 or so, maybe I'll start working my way inside towards the reefs. Maybe I'll start fishing for lingcod. I mean, it's possible a halibut can be in there too. A halibut I like to hang out next to the, not necessarily on the rocks themselves, but right next to them. Uh, it's a good source of food for them, so um, 
you know, it's possible they could be in there too. The reason I'm not going in there now because I don't want to deal with all the all the rockfish and you know possible lingcod will be stealing my bait and stuff. So um, we'll try out here for a little bit longer and then maybe we'll head in there shortly if if this doesn't pan out. Let's get some food out. Maybe that'll help me. You know, one thing that I find way more important these days. I used to not really care that much, but bringing a lunch, super helpful. If you want to stay out here all day, and have energy, especially when you're on the pedal kayaks, like the Hobies, you gotta have energy. Otherwise you're just gonna die. You're not, you're not gonna die, but you're gonna, you're not gonna have enough energy to go out the whole day. So, especially for these like long grind them out, like salmon trolling, especially kayak, or I mean, uh, Halibut drifting, not quite as labor intensive, but just super important to have some food with you, some protein and water, of course. Stay hydrated. It's worth it, trust me. Oh, the fish. Good one. What is this? I don't know what this is, but it's a good one. It's a big one. Whatever it is, it took the squid and went running. Oh. If this is a halibut, man, this is a good one. Oh. I don't know, man. I'm still, he's still pretty close to the bottom because he took a good amount of line on the initial hit. Oh, this other rod is getting bit now. Oh, no, no. Oh, it just came off. Oh, shoot. Dang. I can even see it on my fish finder right here. Oh, man. How did it not get hooked? I almost feel like it was never even hooked. It was just, shoot, shoot. I don't know how it didn't, how did it come off? Uh, man. That's a heartbreaker. That was a heartbreaker. All right, well, nothing to do but to get back down there and try again. All right, you can see this. This is my line coming up, the, the weight, and then that bottom thing is the fish. You can see my line coming up, and then that's where it came off, right there in the middle. And you can see that fish swim back down to the bottom. Oh man, whatever that was, that's what I wanted. Dang it, I don't know what it was. All right, well, try again. There's a bite. Got it. What is this? Oh, what is this? Not too long after. Losing that last one. This one feels uh, a little bit smaller, maybe. I don't know. Still feels not too bad. Let's see if we can put this one. Oh, it's a ling. A little ling cod. Okay, you know what? That makes me think that maybe the last one was also a ling. Oh. Look at that. I feel like it's probably a little reef here. I mean, we're trying, like I said, we're trying to stay by sand, but there's always scattered rock mixed in everywhere. So that makes me feel a little better. I feel like the last one might have been a link cod. We'll never know for sure, but 
This is the one rig that I've gotten stuck on. Well, actually, I shouldn't say that. I've also gotten stuck on some other stuff, but these are the ones you gotta watch out for. All right, little lingcod. He's probably actually a, a keeper if you were fishing for him, right around 24 inches, but um, not only do I not want him, we also can't keep him legally because I'm using two rods here. So anyways, quick release on this little guy. First fish of the day, no skunk. The fish had me going for a little bit. I thought maybe we had a halibut, but no, ling cod. I think, I'm pretty sure now, thinking about it, I think the, the first one that I hooked was also a ling cod, so I don't feel as bad about losing that one. At least that's what I'm gonna tell myself. All right, guys, well, after that catch, it just got really, really windy, picked up really fast. I think it got so windy and rough that me driving the boat in uh, you know, all the vibration from the up and down going over each swell actually knocked my audio port out of the out of the plug. So no audio in this one, but I did want to share this with you guys because um, I tried a couple of a couple of new things here with this new kayak and I, I wanted to share the results. So the first thing I'm trying here is the spot lock technology. And I wanted to try out in the open ocean with a ton of wind and a ton of current. Um, I think the wind was probably blowing like 15 to 20 knots and it's hard to tell out in the open ocean if you're actually staying in one place or not So that's why I pulled up next to this little buoy right here So um, I just cut the motor right there for the last like maybe three or four seconds to show that you know We are in fact drifting if there was no motor um, But then once it kind of calibrated itself um, Right here the spot lock technology is now working its magic and you can see I mean, We're hardly moving. I sat here for about you know two to three minutes I didn't want to sit out there too long because I was on my way in. But, you know, in that in that time frame, we barely moved. I'd say we probably moved like less than five feet uh, in any direction. So, you know, I was I was kind of skeptical that this spot lock thing would be, you know, effective. You know, I thought maybe it could keep us in the same general area. Um, but just knowing that it can keep you within like a five to ten foot radius of like a certain spot. I think that's pretty cool. So anyways, that's the first thing we tested. And then the second thing I was testing is the surf landability of this kayak. Now, I think the popular opinion is that it's not that great for surf launching and landing. Um, so I did want to test it on slightly uh, less than ideal surf conditions. Now I showed you the surf launch, but in my opinion, surf landing is a little bit harder. For one reason is that you're kind of, you're going into the, onto the beach and all the waves are coming from behind you. So you can't really see what's coming. You kind of like got to twist your head back and forth, back and forth. Um, so it's a little bit of a finesse game, but um, I think it's a little bit more difficult than the landing or than the launching. So um, and then on this particular day, on top of that, this swell was supposed to get progressively higher as the day wears on. So, um, you know, I was able to launch with no issues, but I was a little bit concerned about the landing. So um, just like the landing or just like the launching, um, I would sit there and watch the sets for a little bit, kind of try and time it. You know, all the sets or all the waves don't come in at exactly the same size. A lot of times, you know, different beaches are different, but a lot of times, you know, you'll get a few waves coming in that are a little bit bigger, and then there'll be a little lull where um, a few waves or a few swells will come in that are a little bit smaller. So you want to try and hit it when those smaller waves are coming in. And, uh, you know, just sitting here and watching it for a few minutes can definitely help. Um, so one thing to keep in mind with this kayak is the motor just like a Hobie, you know, pedal drive, the motor sticks down into the water. So you can't land the kayak onto the beach with the motor down. So one thing I wanted to try on this particular day is go straight into the beach with the motor running full tilt, full power. And then when I get into about like one to two feet of water, really quickly flip the motor up, jump out of the kayak, and then just kind of walk it up the beach. And um, like I was saying in this video, uh, it's, it's definitely, you know, you, everything, you can't have anything go wrong during that time because right when you're in that one to two feet of water, that's when bad things can happen. That's where the waves are. That's where they can crash on you. That's where you can flip and everything. So you got to really have everything organized, kind of think everything through, make sure you got everything planned out um, before you go ahead and go for it. And here's the whole process going down. You can see me, you know, checking back, looking to make sure there's no big waves coming in. Got the remote in hand 
flip the motor up really quick, jump out. And I think I might have jumped out a little bit too soon. It's probably like two and a half feet of water or so right there. Um, but it worked out. Just one little wave here to get over. Just kind of manage the kayak and then uh, send it up the beach. The waves don't look very big by this, you know, GoPro footage, but I can show you this was the lull in the set. You know, I timed it actually perfectly. It doesn't always work out this well. Um, but if you time it right and you watch all the waves, you can get it right there. And, you know, there you go. Pop the rudder up. We're good to go. All right, that was good. Well done. So, a few things I learned in this video. One, you know, I, I told you in the beginning of the video, it's a scouting mission. Halibut, I don't think they're there. I'm sure there's a few out there, but they're not there in big numbers, so I'm going to have to wait a little bit longer to try and go catch them out in the open ocean, or at least try a different spot than this, because I don't think there's that many out there right now. Two, I learned that the spot lock technology of this kayak is actually pretty dang good. I mean, I was a little bit skeptical. I thought it would be, you know, decent, but it actually, you know, I, in my opinion, I think it's going to be really good for some ideas that I have coming up in future videos. Um, and it was good to test that and out in the open ocean with a ton of wind and all the current and everything out there. Um, I was happy, pleasantly surprised with the uh, results. And then the third last thing is the surf launching and landing ability of this kayak, I think is actually not too bad. I mean, I thought originally that it was going to be extremely difficult to, to especially land this kayak um, with any kind of wave action in the, in the surf. But after a little bit of practice, you know, trying to time the sets, you know, get everything down, get it down to where I can just pop it in, pop it out really quick. I think it's actually very possible. So I'm looking forward to a few more surf launches with this kayak in the future. If you guys have any questions about the kayak or anything in the studio, as always, feel free to leave a comment below. Um, but other than that, I'm off to planning my next adventure. So thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.